Hey everyone, Aisha here. So today I wanted to talk about the topic of self-forgiveness or lack thereof. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because oftentimes we hear a lot about forgiving others, right? Forgive others how Jesus has forgave, have has forgiven us, right? But what about forgiveness to ourself? Because I don't know about you, but when I found myself in an unplanned with an unplanned pregnancy, I carried a lot of bitterness towards myself. I carried a lot of anger towards myself, like how could you not see the red flags? How did you not how did you just ignore those siren red flashing signs, right? How did you ignore that? And so I blame myself a lot. I took on a lot of blame. And so um, I've said multiple times um, that once I became pregnant, he turned verbally abusive towards me. And so I believed a lot of the stuff that he said, and it really impacted me for years. And I needed a lot of therapy to be able to move on from that. And so even in that, I said, how could you have held on to that so long? How did you allow that to hold you hostage for so long? And then I became very angry at myself for allowing myself for being put in that bondage that mental oppression that I fought so hard to escape. I didn't understand why I wasn't able to move forward sooner. I didn't understand how I didn't see the red flags. Um, I was angry at myself for allowing people to help, right? Or claim to want to help and then betray me, right? And so there were a lot of things that I was mad at. I was mad at myself for mismanaging my money, even though I teach and talk about personal finances. And so I harbored a lot of unforgiveness towards myself. So whenever I would make a new decision or be faced with, you know, a new opportunity, I would constantly remind myself of all the bad decisions or mistakes that I made. And it made it very hard to be able to trust myself or trust God enough to be able to move forward in a new thing, right? And so I realized how much self-forgiveness is important to the single motherhood journey. I remember being in an, um, a virtual conference and the speaker said, you know, now let's talk about forgiving ourselves, right? And at that point, I realized, I'm like, wow, there's a lot of things that I need to forgive myself for. And I was so focused on forgiving other people that I did not realize that I was holding on to bitterness and unforgiveness towards myself. And as I was talking about, as I was preparing, you know, meditating on this message today, I was doing it within the context of another video that I've made um, that talks about, um, you know, pushing through versus healing. And I realized that self-forgiveness was a big barrier to healing. And so as I was praying and just asking God, like, what do you want me to say? Um, I remembered the scripture in Matthew 6, verses 14 and 15. And uh, Jesus says, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And I started to think about that. I'm like, okay, we have to forgive for our trespasses. And if we don't forgive, God won't forgive us. And so I started to ask how many of us, I'm like, God, are you not forgiving us if we don't forgive ourselves? Because we are somebody, right? We happen to be ourselves, but we are a person, right? And so I started to wonder if our forgiveness from God was being blocked through our lack of forgiveness towards ourselves. And God takes this very seriously because um, in another passage, he talks about if you're at the altar making sacrifices and you remember that someone has a charge against you or you're harboring unforgiveness in your heart, you have to leave your sacrifice at the altar, go make amends, go forgive, go reconcile, and then come back, right? And so the topic of forgiveness is very seriously, um, very serious. And so Colossians, what chapter is that? Colossians, I think it's three. Yeah, 313 says, 
um, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Self-forgiveness means that you have a complaint against yourself. So you need to forgive yourself as the Lord has forgiven you. And so we must also forgive. That is a commandment. We must also forgive. And so the beautiful thing is, is that um, the Bible says that when we are forgiven by God, I'm going to see if I can pull up the exact scripture. So, um, that, so that way you can go look it up. Guess our sins and be okay. I'm just typing that in to try and find it, right? And so I think it's in Micah 7 19. And it says, He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sea, sins into the depths of the sea. So Jesus will cast our sin into the depths of the sea. We know that He, um, that his sin is cast so far from us, as far from him as the east is from the west, right? And so if God is for remembering our sins no more, then why are we forgiving our own trespasses against ourselves? It's bondage. It's preventing us from moving forward. It's called living in the past. It's called holding on to trauma and lack of healing when you have the choice to move forward. It's a choice, right? It's a choice. How can you ever get to the point where you can make a decision again or move forward without forgiveness and lack of trust? Because when you hold on to unforgiveness, you're telling Jesus that his sacrifice on the cross wasn't good enough. That he, everybody else's sins were forgiven but yours, right? And that you know more than him and that you should be the one holding on and keeping track of your own errors, and that his forgiveness isn't good enough. It's re-traumatizing yourself because you're consistently repunishing yourself over and over and over and over again when you don't have to. Jesus says, and um, it, what was it? It was in Matthew. Um, I just had it up. It, okay, he has it in uh, Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you begin to forgive yourself, you exchange a heavy yoke for a light yoke. And you are able to move forward. And one of the things that I believe is I began to look at the forgiveness scriptures, how God is constantly calling us to forgive as he has forgiven us. I believe that that includes self-forgiveness. And he says it so very clearly that if we don't forgive others for their trespasses, then neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And so it's truly a risk to operate in unforgiveness at all, right? But even unforgiveness towards yourself, because you're at risk of having your sins not forgiven, you have, you're you at risk of derailing your destiny, your purpose, motherhood, because really unforgiveness leads to a root of, a root of bitterness. And the root of bitterness begins to manifest in so many different ways in your finances, in your life, in your relationships. And this is why unforgiveness is so problematic. I was talking to um, a lady yesterday who was raised by a single mom, and she said that she believes for a period of her time, her mom resented her. Her mom was angry at herself. Her mom was angry at the situation, but her mom loved her and wanted her to do better. But yet she was so angry at herself, it ended up impacting how she expressed her love towards her own daughter. And it caused a, a rip in their relationship for a long time until the lady I was speaking to learned how to forgive. And that reconciled her to her mom. And her mom was able to find healing within her own heart for her own decisions. That's the power of forgiveness. That's the power of learning how to forgive yourself. So sometimes we just have to remember that God isn't holding our transgressions against us. God isn't holding our mistakes against us. God isn't holding our, you know, failing to see the red flags. God isn't holding over our head every sin that we've ever committed in life. 
He's freed us. He's forgiven us. So why don't we walk in that freedom that is found in Christ today? Choose to let the anger towards yourself go. Choose to let the forget unforgiveness towards yourself go. Choose to walk in the freedom of Jesus Christ today. Because when you walk in that freedom, you'll find healing for your soul, rest for your soul. Um, forgiveness has also been linked to um, mental health challenges. Um, forgiveness has been linked to health challenges. And so you definitely want to let that unforgiveness go for you, but also for the work that God is calling you to do as a mom and um, just in life as a daughter of the king. And the other thing is you want your sins forgiven. And so you need to make sure that you learn how to forgive completely, totally others, right? But that also includes you. And so in the book, Navigating the Impossible, A Survival Guide for Single Moms from Pregnancy Through the, fir through the First Year of Motherhood, I talk about the topic of self-forgiveness um, in the first um, part of the book because it's so essential to moving forward as a new single mom and really being able to land well and um, start single motherhood on a good foot, right? You know, there's the, there, like, and when I say good foot, like I recognize that God's standard is a man and a woman in covenant marriage towards each other. But if you're in the, but if you are facing single motherhood, then that just means that it's not a reality for you at this point in time. But that does not mean that you have to struggle. It does not mean that you have to stress. It does not mean that you have to be or accept less than. And it does not mean that your children are less than. And so, but what it does mean is that you have an obligation to heal from the hurt and the pain and the trauma of that relationship or whatever that situation was that did not work. Because when you allow yourself to heal, you're liberating yourself from the past and you're allowing yourself to push forward in Jesus Christ. And so one of the scriptures, hopefully I can find it really quickly. It's actually in the book of Philippians. Um, it's in Philippians. Where is it? And it said that that I do is push on pushing forward towards the upward mark in Jesus Christ. Um, Philippians 3. Okay, this is what uh, this is where it is. Philippians 3, verses 13b, all the way through 14. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, right? Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. So what lies behind? The hurt, the trauma, the pain, the bad decisions, right? The mistakes, all of that lies behind. And what do we do? We strain forward towards what lies, behead, uh, lies ahead. That is your newness in Christ. That is your freedom in Christ. And what Paul goes on to say is, I press on towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of Jesus Christ, right? We're pushing forward. We're straining forward. We're focusing on what lies ahead and we're pressing towards that. And that goal and the prize and the upward cause, call in Christ Jesus, what did Jesus do? He died on the cross for your sins so you could be reconciled to God. He took his sin upon him so that you could become sinless, right? And so when God looks now at us, he sees the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And we have right standing in Christ, not because we're perfect, but because Jesus took on our sin at the foot of the cross. So if Jesus took our sin, our pain, our shame, our condemnation at the foot of the cross, why are you still holding on to it? Let it go. Walk and strain, actually strain forward to what lies ahead. Forgetting what lies behind. Forget the negativity. Forget how your children were conceived. Forget it all. And I'm saying this as a single mom of twins who is an only parent. I could dwell on the fact that their twin, that my twin's dad left when I was four months pregnant. I could allow myself to be bound there, but it's a decision not to. It is a decision to forget what lies behind and straight forward towards what lies ahead. And in order to do that, I had to learn to forgive myself. I had to learn to forgive myself for allowing his words to impact me for so long. I had to forgive myself for allowing a misplaced identity rooted in pain that caused me to quit my own 
business and blow through my money and destroy my finances. I had to forget that because in order for me to move forward, I had to forget what lies I had behind and strain forward to what lies ahead because that's what allowed me to allows me to rebuild. That's what allows me to have peace. That's what allows me to focus on motherhood. That's what allows me to focus on the things the Lord has for me to do in my life. I had to stop identifying myself and judging myself and viewing myself through the lens of the past and through hurt, shame, and condemnation and view myself as Christ sees me, as whole, as complete, lacking nothing, fully loved by God in Christ Jesus, his workmanship, right? That's how I had to view myself and that took self-forgiveness. Unforgiveness isn't just directed at other people. It can be directed at self. And so you have to choose today to leave that behind and walk new in Christ Jesus and walk new in your forgiveness. And so I definitely encourage you to pick up the book, Navigating the Impossible, The Survival Guide for Single Moms from Pregnancy Through the First Year of Motherhood. It is available on Amazon. And like I said, I talk more about self-forgiveness and unforgiveness in that book. And I also want to encourage you to like and subscribe this video, leave a, to this video, leave a comment, and also share with a friend who you think will benefit. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a, have a good one. Bye.